Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, glory, 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 are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, glory, 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 hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, so worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, so worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, so worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus. Good morning, good morning, Kingdom citizens. Good morning, good morning. How are you all doing? Good morning, good morning, Kingdom citizens. Glory, 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 glory to the Lord God Almighty. I pray and hope that you all woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord Jesus, that you are ready to conquer and walk victorious in Jesus Christ today. Oh, what a wonderful Saturday morning. Amen. So this is Dive Into the Word, daily Bible reading, where we are getting into the Word Every single day. We are in Genesis chapters 1 and 2 this morning. And then Matthew 1. Genesis chapters 1 and 2 and then Matthew 1. Amen. All right, so let's pray. Abba Father, Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creative heaven and earth. We come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God. For another wonderful, beautiful Saturday morning, we thank you for waking us up this morning, ordering our steps, getting us on our way, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God that prepares us for whatever may come our way, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you keep us in the know, Lord Jesus. We delight in your word, Lord God. We delight in your ways. And we want to know more. We pray and ask that you continue to increase us, Lord Jesus, in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Take us to that next level, Lord God. We pray that you continue to prepare us to, to for, so we can work and labor and preach and teach and whatever you need us to do. Give us the equipment and the resources and everything we need to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, Lord God. And so we pray that all manner of sickness, disease, viruses, anything like that be removed from the body of Christ, Lord God. We pray that you dismantle it, get rid of it. We pray that you are the cure. You are the physician, the great physician. You are the one, the vaccination, Lord God, that you remove all sickness, virus, and disease from the body of Christ, Lord Jesus. Heal us in our mind, our body, and our soul, Lord God. And we just, we say that it is done. We believe, we trust in you. We depend on you. We rely on you, Lord God. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Glory, glory, glory to God. All right. Good morning. Good morning, kingdom citizens.
All right, so I am going to read the introduction of Genesis. Of course, they say this is the first book of Moses. It says the book of Genesis is the great book of beginnings in the Bible. True to the meanings of its Hebrew and Greek names. In beginning. Uh, let's see. The Hebrew is bear, bear, bear sheath in beginning. And then Greek, gen, genis, genesis of birth. Genesis permits us to view the beginning of a multitude of realities that shape our daily existence. The creation of the universe and the planet Earth, the origins of plant and animal life, and the origins of human beings. Marriage, families, nations, industry, artistic expression, religious ritual, prophecy, sin, law, crime, conflict, punishment, and death. All right, so Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called the seas, called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. You know, I'm thinking about, I have to pause for a second. I'm actually thinking about the fact that, okay, so Moses wrote this. Moses, Moses didn't come until way later. So God, God trusted Moses with this information. Like, it's like he, he called Moses to go and, and, and this is this is revelations, revealings that God gave to Moses about the beginning of everything. You know, it's like, how cool is that? <laughs> how awesome is that that he chose someone? To have given this information to, you know, 
And of course, you know, uh, I have a lot of commentary going on right here uh, for chapter one. A lot of commentary. So I wouldn't even know where to begin to read uh, when it comes to the commentary. But that I I was just thinking about that as as I'm reading that that God gave Moses this revelation of the creation of the of the earth and heaven and how everything how he began everything when it comes to the earth you know and then also notice it says the evening and the morning were the first and the third day, the evening. So, um, I, I learned long time ago. I learned long time ago that our evening, our evening actually starts, um, the new day. So we, we say the new day starts at 12 midnight, but it's actually more like maybe, maybe, uh, 10, 10, 11, approaching 12, that is our actual new day. But we, some man done came up with 12 midnight um, as, as the start of the new, a new day. Which I think is really, really interesting because the sun don't come up until hours later. You know, the sun rotates around the earth, but I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool how, you know, and and that God is the one that named the day, day and night, night, you know, it's pretty cool to me. Anyways, so Genesis 1 uh, verse 14 So if y'all have any comments, don't forget to make comments. You know, um, I know that this is this is a, a a very popular read. Everybody has read at least Genesis, cha- you know, chapter one. Everybody has at least read it once or twice in their lifetime. You know, so. But there's always new information, you know, new for us, not for God. It's always new for us. And there's always new levels he can take us when he increases the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding. When, as you read again, when you read it again. So definitely make comments and engage All right, so verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them, whew, excuse me, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. 
And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature, excuse me, after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So I'm I'm pausing. One of one of the things whenever I would read this, one of the things that I would notice is how God definitely and and he made sure he uh created um in the different categories you got the 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 creatures of the sea and he calls them creatures of the sea and then he says fowls of the air and then cattle and creeping thing and beast so cattle and beast are different things creatures after his own kind so cattle creeping things and beast of the earth after his kind so notice that they they are in in their own different categories in their own different kinds then he comes and creates man this this part always always really really uh touches me because scientists always want to try to come along and say that humans come from animals or things like that. But that's not what the word says. <laughs> the word says that there's creatures of the sea, fowls of the air, living creature after his own kind, which is cattle, creeping thing, and beast of the earth. Then in verse 26, he says, and God said, let us make man in our image. So to say that a human being comes from an animal is to say that God is an animal. And I don't agree with that. <laughs> whenever, whenever I read this, this, this is what always goes through my mind. It's like, it knocks out that whole scientific, you know, man comes from animal thing or monkeys or whatever, you know. And I, I know, I know I'm sitting up here touching on a touchy subject <laughs> when, when it comes to that. That is a very, very touchy subject. But when I read in my word, that God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Then that tells me that we don't come from animals, period, <laughs> at all. <laughs> you know, we're not made after animals. You know. So uh, verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So then he gives man dominion over all of it. So he says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then he tells, he gives dominion to the man over all of it. So verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male, <clears throat> male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth.
that 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 is so amazing the creation of man and and woman for one uh for one uh if you don't understand right here it's wrapping up everything that you know when it came to creating man so it's gonna go it's gonna it's gonna break it down and go explain the creation of the man and then the woman and so right now it's saying overall that's what he did he created man in his own image and the image of god created he him male and female created he them and then he told them to and then he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. So subdue is one of those words that you need to look up. Subdue means he's already letting them know that they're going to have to work for. I mean, like they're going to have to fight for the land. They're going to have to they're going to have to go and conquer. So if you if you look up the word subdue. He's already letting them know you're going to have to go and conquer this. Even God is saying, I'm giving it to you. It's all, but there's going to be some, there's going to be some uh, problems in the near future. <laughs> so if you look up the word subdue, it's like, it's like, he's already letting them know that, that, you know, he already knows that there's going to be some problems and that they're going to have to subdue it, conquer, you know, but that, that is awesome. Any comments, any comments? Yeah, that word replenish too. You got to look up that word replenish, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue these are these are instructions right right off right away he's giving them some instructions you know so verse 29 and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. Now, I <laughs> I have to pause. I'm going to be pausing a lot in this area because, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on that God is like letting you know. So uh, he's letting them know. Right then and there, this is the food. This is the beginning. This is this is how we were to eat, and that's off of trees. Every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, he said to you, it shall be for meat. So this was our meat: herbs, trees, the fruit of the trees. So. We were vegetarians. The the first man and woman were veget. I mean, like that's that's what we were vegetarians. We ate uh, we ate the fruit of the trees, the herbs. So spices. He gave us herbs and spices and things like that, and 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 that's and that's how we were to eat. That was our meat. But I'm going to give you, I'm going I'm to show you something even more amazing. Verse 30, and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. So not only did he make man and woman vegetarians, the animals and the creatures and the creeping things were vegetarians. They did not eat each other. They ate off of the trees and the herbs. Green herb for meat. 
do you see this? This is this is so exciting to me. We we did not eat meat. We did not eat animals. And the animals did not eat animals. Like this is the way it was set up at the very beginning. So verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So there, so you got to understand if, if you really, really pay attention to what's going on and the changes that are happening in our lives, God is literally bringing us back to that original relationship. He's bringing us back to how it was at the beginning. Like the way the way he the way he came, he walked the earth, the way he had a relationship with man and woman. Like he he walked with Adam and talked with Adam, you know, and, 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 and if you notice, if you notice throughout the body of Christ, how we're all changing the way we eat, the way, the way we, uh, you know, and, and, and now we're, we're growing our own food. You know, a lot of us are growing, growing our own food. We're, we're growing the herbs and the spices. We're growing the fruit the the vegetables we're we're growing those things and we're we're getting back to the way we originally you know originally uh was designed we were we were originally designed and I'm 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 still going back to that be fruitful and multiply and replenish and subdue those are some instructions right there from the very beginning. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. If if we if we if we'd follow the original just that right there, we would be so much better off, you know? Any comments? Any comments? We're getting ready to do Genesis 2. Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. If you are just coming on, we are in Genesis. We just read chapter 1, and now we'll read 2, and then read Matthew 1. All right. Chapter two, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became a living soul. So in chapter one, we read the whole summary of everything that he did. So now he's breaking down what came first and how he did it and everything. So again, so again, when it comes to the form of man, 
again, we see that we are not animals. He made us from the dust of the ground. He breathed into the nostrils of, of the man and breathed life. And it says man became a living soul. So, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pis I guess that's Pison, that is it which compasses the whole land of Havala, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is de de Delium and the Ankh stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hedekil. That is it which goeth toward the east of Azria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. I hope I said all those names, those names right. So, <laughs> and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, whew, excuse me, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. So see, this is breaking, this is breaking down the, the creations of, you know, everything. So how he, how he, uh, formed everything. And so, um, so man was, man was made before the woman. And so, uh, he created all the beasts, all the cattle, everything, he gave man dominion over all of it. He even told man to take care of it. Th this is yours. Take care of it. And, 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 and don't touch the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know. But Adam had it good, you know. Oh, excuse me. Adam had it good because. All the trees, all the other trees, he was able to eat, and and he he didn't have to he didn't have to till the he didn't have to do anything really. It, it, they they grew. He had fruit. He had everything, you know. All right. So verse twenty one, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs. And closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. 
because they didn't even know that they were naked. They they didn't have any clue that they were naked. They this is this that that was their this is who they were, you know. I I the the creation of all everything I, I I it's like a beautiful poetry to me. It's so beautiful the way God the way God orchestrated everything and the way he you know put everything together and and I I love the fact that he allowed us to know. He allowed he allowed Moses to get the revelation of it and to be revealed to him everything and and how all of it all started and all began and 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 we get to read about it and we get to see you know the beauty of everything that God did you know and it's and it's such a beautiful beautiful thing it it, it I love it I love I love I love reading the beginning on how everything uh, started. And that's just the beginning for us. That's just the beginning, you know, because uh, it, it, it's, it's not breaking down. If you notice, it's not breaking down all the activity of what's going on in heaven, you know, He's only given us the information that we need here on earth because it says he created the heavens and the earth. So there's things going on. And that's why that's why you have to understand the spiritual, the spiritual is just as real as the physical. Everything that's going on spiritually is just as real as what's going on physically, because God is spirit. He is a spirit. And there's and and he created other spirits, angels, things. So there's activity going on all around us, all the time, every day, and and it's 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 just awesome and beautiful. Any comments? Any comments? I am going to continue to encourage you to make comments. We just got through reading Genesis 1 and 2. And, and, and that, that is nothing that you can just sit back and just be quiet about. That, that is so awesome and amazing. All right. So let's go to Matthew 1. And I'm going to read the introduction of Matthew Says Matthew, it, it says, it seems fitting that the first book of the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew, began with these words the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. This gospel was written from a strong Jewish perspective to show that Jesus truly is the Messiah promised in the Old Testament. So that's the introduction So you're going to have to bear bear with me when it comes to saying these names the generations the genealogy of Jesus Christ um because some of these names are really really hard to say um so bear with me <laughs> This is where you're going to have to show me some patience because these these names, some of these are really, really hard. All right. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham beget Isaac and Isaac beget Jacob and Jacob beget Judas and his brethren. And Judas beget Pharaoh's. Fer- and Zara of Thamar, and Pharis beget Ezra, and Ezra beget Aram, 
Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab. And Aminadab begat Niasan. And Niasan begat Sol Solomon. And Solomon begat Bo Boaz, Bo Boaz of Rechab. And Bo Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon begat Reboam, and Rebo and Reboam begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa, and Asa begat Jehos Josephat, and Josephat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Azcaius. And Azekias beget Manassas, and Manassas beget Amon, and Amon beget jo Josias, and Josias beget Jeconias and his brethren. About the time they were carried away to Babylon, and after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias beget Salathiel. And Salathiel beget Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel beget Abu Abuid, and Abuid beget Eliakim, and Eliakim beget Azar, Azor, and Azar beget Sadok, and Sadok beget Achim, and Achim beget Eluid, and Eluid beget Elazar, and Elazar beget Mathen, and Mathen beget Jacob. And Jacob beget Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Woo! I think I did that better than last time. <laughs> so if I botched up any of the names, forgive me. But over time, I will learn how to say them right. <laughs> All right, so verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. That's a lot of people. Like think of all the people that were born. We're talking 14 generations between Abraham and David, 14 generations from David until the carrying away of Babylon, and then 14 generations from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ. So when they when they when they went back into slavery, they were free, they was freed from Egypt, then they ended up having to go back into slavery and like, that's a lot of people. Like, they obeyed that very first, in the beginning, it says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. And, and they definitely did that. All right, so verse 18. We are in Matthew 1, verse 18. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Excuse me, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled 
which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. So, so that, that, that is awesome. So it, in, in the word to know, uh, even in, in, uh, the old Testament, it'll, it'll say, um, that Adam knew his wife, Adam knew his wife, Eve to know that means she stayed a virgin. That means they, they didn't even, they didn't even, um, what, what, what would be the word consecrated? their their marriage until after Jesus was born. So she was a virgin even through the birth. She was a virgin the whole time. That she 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 didn't even they she didn't even know they didn't even know each other until after the birth of Jesus Christ. So no 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 form of man's seed whatsoever nothing entered into her until after Jesus was born isn't that amazing like that's awesome to me so Jesus would be completely born it is consummate that's <laughs> thank you thank you Beverly <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Cause I couldn't think of the word what it was. So their, their marriage was not consummated until after Jesus Christ was born. So that, that right there lets you know that Jesus Christ did not have no form of sin whatsoever. Cause sin was, is in the seed of the man. And that's why he he could not know uh, they could not consummate their marriage whatsoever because this, the, the, the seed of sin is inside the man. Sorry, man. That's the way it is. <laughs> but Jesus had to Jesus had to be born completely perfect and sinless, period. And that's why he had to be born from a virgin that's and that's that's the way that's the way it is so he would be born born per- perfect no sin nothing foul in him whatsoever all right so any comments any comments Of course, in the commentary, they use the word intercourse. I was trying to avoid using those type of words, but. (laughs) Says Mary's pregnancy was a miracle performed by the spirit. Not that God assumed material form and physically impregnated her. This makes Jesus conception dramatically different from Greeks myths that speak of children born to gods who lay with women. So, yes, this this is completely different from that. So, you know, Greek mythology, Greek mythology talks about and, and, and that's something that we'll 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 definitely discuss later. And that starts in Genesis chapter six. Uh, Greek mythology actually began in Genesis chapter six, where it talks about how the sons of the God, the sons of God came to women and they and they gave they had children from them. 
Well, this is not the same thing. God literally placed himself in the womb of Mary. There was no, there was no, uh, what do you say? Consummation. There was no, I mean, it was like he just, it's a, it's a miracle, you know? So I think that's beautiful. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful that he chose Mary. He chose this, you know, and sometimes I think about what, what, what type of person was she like, what kind of characteristics did she have that she would be the one chosen? You know, it, it, it never really, it never really describes, you know, like who Mary was, you know, but that she was chosen by God to carry, you know, him in her womb, you know, to carry him in her womb. I mean, she must have been like one of the meekest, truthful. I mean, she had to be almost practically perfect herself for her to be chosen, you know. I think about that sometimes. Like what type of characteristics does she have? I, I know it was awesome I, to be chosen by God to carry God, <laughs> you know, to carry God in her womb. That That's awesome. Any comments? Any comments? Now, y'all not going to be doing this to me. Y'all got to make comments. Y'all got to, y'all got to, uh, say what's going on in your spirit as we read these words. So if you are just coming on, we just got through reading Genesis one and two, and then we read Matthew one. We got to read the birth of earth and heaven, the, the creation of heaven and earth, and then the beginning of, you know, the coming of Jesus Christ and how he came about, you know, the beginning, the beginnings of beginnings, you know. Amen. Any other comments? Any comments? Any any comments? And I mean any other comments other than mine? Any other comments other than what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyone have anything to say? All right. Well, don't forget to share and invite. Know that we are on every morning. Uh, reading the words of God and and just really, really allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and increase us even more. So for some of you that, you know, you may be new coming on. Uh, we just got through reading the entire Bible in one year. And, 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 and now we're, we're going over it again, you know, and, and this, is, this has to be a daily, daily thing, you know, we're not, we're not, we weren't taught that growing up to, to, to stay in the word every single day, you know? And so that's, that's what we're, we're, we're learning to be in the word and stay in the word every single day. So we're here every morning at five 30. And uh, you are all invited. Don't forget to share and invite. And you know that I love you all. I love you, love you, love you. And you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning. <laughs>